Now we're going to start with architecture. The complexity, diversity, and sophistication of Hellenistic culture called for architecture on an imperial scale of a very wide diversity because we have a lot of different peoples being draw drawn into this Hellenistic empire. And building activity shifts off, as I said earlier, to the east. We're mostly dealing with pieces in modern-day Turkey, the Near East, and parts of what had been Persia, modern-day Iran, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, etc. So we start with the Temple of Apollo at Didyma. And it's built to replace an old archaic temple. Construction here starts in 313, although the work will continue for 500 years, and the piece is never actually completed. And it doesn't look like your standard temple. There's no pediment or roof. The one thing that is standard is it has the same proportions as the Parthenon. The entrance to the cella was actually elevated. So here we have the cella, which is elevated above everything else. And it also, in doing so, basically creates a stage for the oracle, because there was an oracle to Apollo uh, at the site. And the cella would have been up here, uh, elevating him up. This, uh, sorry, I did that. There are two doors to either side, which would have allowed entry into the cella. And the opening to the courtyard actually contained a sacred spring and laurel tree. Uh, so here's the sacred spring that's coming in. Uh, and that's going to be particularly important. Springs in the Greek world are particularly important. They're almost miraculous forms of water available to the people. Opposite the inner temple, uh, we see a 50-foot stairway leading to the oracle's room that also opened to the front of the temple. So here's that oracle's room up here, and that opens to the front of the temple out here. So that's up here, as I said, and opens out so that he can make those pronouncements. The complex interior planning is a very sharp departure from the classical form. The classical, of course, focused on the exterior, leaving the interior relatively undeveloped, except for the cult statue. Here we don't have a cult statue, and it's almost a temple that's inside out. It's a very complex form, and keep in mind, it's never finished. And it would have looked something like this in three dimensions. Like I said, it's a complex form, so I'm trying to find ways to get across exactly what this looked like and how it was particularly unusual. And here, this would be the Oracle's stage where he's making pronouncements, where it's elevated and you can't actually enter in. There are staircases to the sides that would allow you to come in uh, to the main temple. And here's the sacred spring uh, inside this structure. Now moving on, we have the Hippodamian city plan. Now Hippodamus imposed a strict grid regardless of terrain so that all streets would meet at right angles. This is the first time that an empire on a large scale is creating a city plan that they're going to use throughout. The Romans will do this as well. Now, this is not to say that plans did not exist earlier. It's just that the Greeks and Hippodamus makes it popular. And the city plan was both logical and regular. We have a grid laid out within the city walls, although the plan sort of shifts and changes once you get outside those walls. And what we're seeing is the Greeks imposing order on nature. What they're doing here is creating cities that you can navigate even though you've never been to them. Because certain things are always in specific places. In the center, we always have the civic center. So this is one of the main markets. 
Here we have the amphitheater or the theater. Here we have our sort of courts and civic structures. And all of these towns will be laid out the same way. So it could be your first time you're going to know more or less where to go. We actually do this today. Think of Madison or Milwaukee. As soon as you find that downtown area, you know you're going to find the civic structures in Milwaukee. The county courthouse, the city hall, the museums, they're all within a few blocks. In Madison, it's the same thing. Now, what they do, if this is a hillside, these streets that run down the hill will actually be stairs. So it does limit some transportation. It's hard to take a wagon downstairs. But it does lend an ease to everything, and it makes it relatable. It makes it so that people always know where they are. It's very comfortable. It's not going to be too much of a problem. So we have all aspects of a Greek city here, including baths, housing, sanctuaries, the marketplace, the council house, theater, gymnasium, and stadium all laid out in identical form.